this is my homemade one inch vertical strip sander that I made on this channel about two years ago. And in today's video, I want to show you how it's been holding up, a few things about it that I really like that make it my favorite sander in the workshop, one thing that needs to be fixed, and how to get some plans so you can build one of these for your workshop. If you haven't seen the build video already, I would encourage you to go watch that, and I'll link it in the description below. But it's got a lot of details on how I made this thing and how it actually works. But I'll give you a quick rundown right now. The main difference between this design and most commercial strip sanders is that the sandpaper obviously goes up and then straight right back down on a post style design as opposed to on three or four wheels in a loop. Now I think that has a couple of advantages. One of the advantages is the small footprint. This has a relatively small footprint and doesn't take up a lot of workspace. And I've seen some of the commercial ones, they're pretty long because they're making that big loop with the sanding belt and they take up a little bit more of your workbench. Another advantage that this has over the commercial loop style is that you can sand an inside circle like on this piece by dropping it over the post. This makes it feel a lot like a spindle sander, yet it's still got some of the benefits of it being a belt sander. One of those benefits I think on this design is the dust collection is absolutely excellent. The dust gets sucked down right through the table and since the opening on here is very small, there's really no place for it to go and the dust port on the back pretty much collects all of it. Another feature I included on this sander is removable platens and these are just made out of hardwood. This one's a hickory with a straight flat one in like this piece. You can sand up to the line on a straight edge or do uh, roundovers, uh, radiuses on the corners, and just sand general purpose stuff that you would use a, a belt sander for. However, you can also swap that out for a curved one, like I've got stored over here. And this one's just got a slight radius sanded into it. And with that on the sander, now we can sand an inside curve like here, which you typically you wouldn't be able to do on a belt sander or a disc sander. So it gives you that spindle sander functionality once again. Overall, I would say I probably split sanding 50-50 on these two platens. The straight one is a very good journal purpose. I use that all the time for knocking down edges and sanding to the line. Yet the curved one has helped me get into a lot of tricky places and I find myself using this one quite a lot too. Now I will admit there's one feature that this sander does not do well that the commercial sander loop styles do do well on and that's an inside slot like this. Now because of the way that this belt design has the loop going right back down right behind the main sanding belt you can't sneak in a slot to sand it because the sanding belt on the back side is in the way. I haven't really found myself needing to sand a shape like this yet. I'm much more often sanding an inside radius like this or I'm sanding a circle to try to get something like a pipe to fit into it. And I don't really find myself making this very often. So I guess there's some trade-offs and depending on what kind of sanding you do, that may or may not be a bit a problem. Another thing I like about this sander are the three different sanding spots that I have on the sanding belt. Most commercial sanders uh, enclose the top wheel for probably safety concerns but I left this one open and that allows you to sand uh, right on the wheel to get a nice contour uh, on a curve. Right below it is a soft spot because there's no platen behind there and that helps you break edges and just gives a, a nice soft control to sanding. And then obviously down below there's about three inches of platen and that allows you to do either inside radiuses or um, sanding to straight lines. There's two more things that I really like about this sander. One is the noise or lack of noise. It's actually pretty quiet. Uh, I'm talking in my normal voice and you can, you can still hear me just fine. And the main reason for that is there's only two moving parts on here and there's no belts besides the sanding belt itself. There's the lower wheel which spins right on the motor shaft so that doesn't make any noise. And then there's the upper wheel on bearings, which is pretty quiet. And really all the noise comes from mostly is the sanding belt rubbing on bits of the, of the machine as it's coming through the table. And you get a little bit more noise when you start sanding a piece. But it's quiet enough that I don't need to wear ear protection. And I really enjoy that about this sander.
The last thing that I really like about this sander is its simplicity. And considering I made it myself and the parts aren't very complicated, I pretty much got lifetime warranty and part support and if anything should ever break, it won't be that hard to repair it. I like the simplicity of the one wheel on top and the one wheel on the bottom. Um, it, it, there's less parts overall in the system and that just helps make for a better machine that'll last a lot longer. Now there is one thing about this design that doesn't work very well and I want to fix that today. And that's how I attach the sanding post to the main platform below. And that was with a, a bottom screw and a top adjustment screw so that I could perfectly align this to 90 degrees with the table. However, it keeps loosening up over time and as you can see right now it's not holding its position and I can actually move the whole post back and forth. Now it's not really a big deal. I thought I was going to use it more for precision like squaring up an edge to 90 degrees and I don't actually use it for that very much. I mostly use it for sanding smaller pieces, curves and things like that and not really for squaring up 90 degrees. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this apart and glue the whole support in place and I'll get it as close to 90 degrees as possible and I think that that will be a good enough fix. Here you can see the two screws that hold this block to the main frame and as you can see the top one's not very tight and that's because it's an oversized hole to allow for some adjustment but I'm just going to remove that and glue it in place. Now I can't quite get this bottom bolt out because it's running into the motor but I've got this block off far enough and I should be able to get some glue to squeeze down in there. Okay, with some glue on there, I'll just go ahead and reassemble it and get it on there as square as possible. I'm pretty happy with how square that is. Um, with the addition of that glue on that joint, now I know that that post is never going to move again. If for some reason I did need to change the angle to the table, I could always take the aluminum bar off from the wood block. It is just screwed on from the front into this wood block and I could shim under there to tip this uh, uh, aluminum pillar if I needed to in the future. But uh, it looks good, so let's put it back together. Before I put the sanding belt back on, I'll we'll take a look at how the top either wheel is holding up. This whole thing actually comes off. Uh, it's made out of plywood and overall I really don't see any wear because of the back of the belt is just a paper-like substance. It doesn't really wear very much. You can see the black part around the middle of the wheel where the belt rides the most since this is a crowned wheel. Otherwise, the bearings still feel nice and clean, no noise, and looks like it's good for another few years. I'm going to go ahead and put on a brand new belt because this one's pretty much had it. If you're interested in building one of these sanders for your workshop, I've put together this set of detailed plans and you can get this on my website in a PDF format that you can either download onto a tablet like this or print it out and bring it to your workshop. It's 30 some pages long. The first few pages show you materials and hardware that you'll need along with some exploded views to show you each component. Then there are detailed drawings of each component to show you how to cut it out 
And then the second half of the document is all step-by-step -step instructions which show you how to build the sander one component at a time into the final product. So if that's something you're interested in, head over to the website and get that. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next project.